hi guys, it's Cliff here from Down Under. This video is going to be about Tormac and other CNC lathe job setup and run. I'm going to take you right through from the start making these grinding wheel hubs or arbors or flanges depending on what part of the world you're from. So I've done a batch of 10 arbors with washers and hardened nuts and I'll go through from the describing the product, producing the sketch, setting up the CNC lathe, setting up the tool offsets, the work offsets, setting up the job and the chuck, running each part, running the body, the washer, and the nuts, and finishing them off. Uh, so it might take two or three videos, part one, two, and three. I'll run a little uh, introduction uh, series of clips just so that you can see the content of these two or three videos um, just for a few uh, seconds and uh, see whether it's something you'd be interested in. Alrighty, cheers! I want these wheel hubs for my little universal D-bit grinder, a sort of a decal clone. And uh, the machine is really good value for money, made in China and the quality's not too bad. Um, but it only came with one wheel hub. And so every time I needed to change wheels, I had to install the wheel and centralize it and dress it. And it sort of put me off using it really. Anyway, after watching a couple of YouTube videos from uh, Stefan Goswinter and uh, Rob Renzetti, thanks for those videos guys, they're really inspiring. It gave me the enthusiasm to make my own wheel hubs or arbors. They also uh, outline a really useful little tool that saves time with installing and extracting the wheel hubs or arbors. And this all helps you uh, to speed up the use of the machine and make it more likely that you will utilize it fully. So I'm going to do a run of these grinding wheel hubs or arbors and um, let's have a bit of a look at it here. So out of a medium tensile steel, it's got a taper on one side and a thread and different diameters. I think it's really important to plan your machining strategy from beginning to end right through before you start. It's very tempting just to get started and work it out as you go, but I've found over the years it's really worthwhile uh, avoiding painting yourself into a corner somewhere and thinking the whole job through, being really procedural and strategic. So the first thing you do is force yourself to do a proper little sketch. You know, you can do it on your computer, you can CAD model it, but a sketch is just as good. Um, as long as you've got all the key dimensions of the various parts, that familiarizes yourself intimately with the various components and you're checking threads and diameters and fits and, you know, really, really make the effort to 
get all the dimensions worked out. That's your first step. And then look at what are your options for material. What stock do you have? What do you need to buy in? With a view to how are you going to hold it? You know, are you going to back back to back machine it? In this case, I'm going to machine two on a billet of steel. In one direction on this end, then turn them round and machine the other end. In this setup and run video, I'll be using Slant Pro 15L. I've also got Rapid Turn and the 8L lathe is similar in that they all use the same control software PathPilot. In fact, most small CNC lathes have similar control software and this video could be useful for you. But so working out your plan or your strategy, so you've got your sketch with all your dimensions, you've worked out how you're going to hold your stock, and now you start thinking about what tools am I going to use. Remember, tools need to be stiff and sharp. Tool flex causes big problems for machining. So once you've worked out the tools, then you can mount them all in your turret, gang tooling, or quick change tool post, depending on what system you're using. And you really want some sort of a tool setter to set your tools, because the first stage is to mount them and orientate them, to get them all in the right position. And the second stage is to set the tool offsets through into the control software. So um, it saves a lot of time if you've got a tool setting gauge. Mounting all of your tools and aligning them and then setting your tool offsets is probably the, the most labor intensive part of the job. And um, a tool setter saves a lot of time. You don't have to buy a tool setter. You can make your own out of a piece of ground shafting, split it in half, to a D section and use that as a tool setter to set to help with aligning your tools and uh, mounting them and for setting your tool offsets it does save a lot of time. So for mounting and aligning the tools for example this little boring bar I can use a tool setter and rotate it into position using the bubble vial and that sets the flat on the anvil on the center height and in line with the x-axis and I can then rotate the tool onto the center height and in the correct rotational alignment because I'm holding it on the boring bar diameter and I need to set the rotational position and the center height so having a wave tool setter speeds this process up a lot. So now we've mounted and aligned that tool, an upside down boring bar. Let's have a look at the control software path pilot here. We're going to look for the correct orientation tool on the tool touch page. That's it there, isn't it? A boring bar like that. We click on that. You can see it. that's confirming our choice there. And we can now set the tool offsets in the X and the Z. Okay, so we set up the software on the tool touch page and we're going to set the tool offsets on X and Z. So we rotate the tool set around 90 degrees using the little bubble vial to set the 90 degree position there. We turn the tool setter on. We bring the tool into contact on the X face of the anvil and when the light goes out at that point there when the LED goes out we are on X0 we enter 0 into the tool touch DRO now we set the Z bring it into contact with the end of the anvil at that point there we enter Z0 into the ZDRO and we've set the tool offsets now for tool number one. So let's do the OD turning tool now. We've entered tool two into the software on the tool, tool touch page. You can see that's an OD turning tool and we're ready to set the offsets there. We can use the tool setter to set the alignment and mount it. We may have to shim it onto center height 
we can check that it's on center height there clamp it up so all right so we've mounted the tool and aligned it and we're on the uh, tool touch page we're ready to set the tool offsets for tool number two so we rotate the tool setter around 90 degrees using the bubble vial to there turn the tool setter on bring the tool in contact with the anvil when the LED goes out we enter zero into the XDRO and then we enter Z zero at that point when the LED goes out now we've set the tool offsets for tool number two and so we, on we go through the different tools setting the tool offsets so you can see how a tool setter is a big time saver now you can make your own tool setter you don't have to buy a tool setter if it's not within your budget at least in the short term it takes a little bit longer because you've got to use a piece of paper uh, or use light but it's still a lot quicker than setting it by trial and error and machining and measuring and so on. We're calling the parting tool number eight. Come in and set the Z, set the X. X zero. Okay, a spotting drill, let's call that tool number five. Turn the tool setter on, index in, and this time we're going to go to the diameter. And the light, when the LED goes out there, we enter the diameter into the tool touch. Six millimeters is the diameter. And now we can set the Z, and that's just the same as the other tools Z0. At that point, Z. Tool number six, a threading tool. Set the X to zero. And to set the Z, well the Z is not critical on a threading tool, so we just align it with the end of the setter and that's our Z zero. So we set up for tool number nine. That's going to be a drill for the M8. So we're going to put in a 6.8 drill there. Come into contact on the anvil. Enter here in the tool touch DRO 6.8. Enter, enter. You can see it there in the work offset DRO. I'm getting lazy holding the camera in my hand. Tripod doesn't get in my way if I'm holding it in my hand. Touch up on the Z. Touch the Z there. So now we've got them both set. Don't set them in the work offset DRO. Set them in the tool touch DRO. So keep going like that until all the tools are set. Just takes a few minutes with the tool setter. And then we can move on to setting up our coolant to make sure we've got coolant supplying the tools as we need it. Now we come to set the work offsets. Some of you might be thinking, well, you've set all the tool offsets relative to the tool setter, but what about how do you set it relative to the work? Well, you put your piece of stock in, and all of your tool offsets are set on the X relative to the center line, so that doesn't change between the tool setter and the work. But regarding the Z, the longitudinal is different for the stock than it is for the tool setter. So you bring your tool in, for example your external turning tool 
just in past the end of the stock we're going to call that Z0 and we make the adjustment not in the tool offsets page but in the work offsets page and here we just click that button there and it goes to zero and all of the tool offsets in the tool table are all shunted to that new position they're all shifted as a family so we as simple as that just pushing that Z0 button we've shifted all of the tool offsets into the correct position for this particular job okay so uh, we've got all the tools mounted the tool offset set now we're going to set up the coolant I want this production job to run automatically to me that's the whole point of a CNC lathe that it runs unattended uh, otherwise you might as well do it on a manual lathe um, so I'm going to be setting it up with chip breaking and coolant um, to control the swath coming off otherwise it just won't run automatically so I'm checking out and adjusting that we're getting coolants onto all of the tools where we need it and setting the feeds and speeds so that we get good chip breaking Slump Pro comes with a 6 inch chuck which is quite big and bulky and if you're doing production work with gang tooling and that type of thing it's going to really limit the space for tools um, I think a 5 inch chuck is a better fit and you can grind the outside step of the jaws down just to make it a bit more streamlined for this type of work see if I can demonstrate it um, just graphically for you you can see that drill was getting pretty close to the chuck and that would not have worked with a six inch chuck or even an ordinary chuck with the jaws sticking out um, you know you just won't have space for enough tooling my rationale for grinding the jaws the step of the jaws off is that you're using a big chuck for holding large diameter work um, so if that part is going to be sticking out in fresh air grinding it off is not lowering the support of the jaw at all you're just removing a useless part of the jaw and if you want to hold smaller diameter work you're going to use a smaller chuck anyway for example these little four inch chucks are a better fit for small diameter work okay so we've mounted all the tools we've set our tool offsets we've set up the coolant we've put in our chuck we've put our stock in we've moved the tool in to the Z position Z0 and so we've set that in the software so now all the tool offsets are relative to the work now we can go ahead and produce the uh, program for the tool path I'm going to do it this time with the conversational because it's quite a simple part you remember it's just straightforward diameters and threads and a little bit of boring and so on drilling quite an interesting project to use as a tutorial for I'm just not sure how deeply I should go into this software is not my strong point but sometimes uh, using layman's terms is really helpful for people to learn anyway um, some of you will be advanced users already and some of you will be beginners so um, I'm just not sure how deeply to go into it I might run a couple of uh, examples and show them running uh, alright so let's be really procedural about this again so let's make sure we've got a file a folder we're going to call this grinding wheel hubs and in that folder we're going to put all the little sub programs from the conversational so let's start with a facing toolpath because that's the, I think that's the best thing to start with with a job like this we're going to set the tool on Z0 and 0 here with the DRO that sets the work offset and so we probably want to start back a bit say two millimeters back 80 thou back to allow for your sawn off excess length and then we're going to enter in uh, the roughing depths of cut finishing depths of cut 
just following through and ticking the boxes really what's make sure you can select the right tool and uh, the uh, surface feed and the uh, cut per revolution feed rate is really critical if you want your machine to run automatically and this medium tensile steel I'm running it at 100 meters per minute and a maximum spindle RPM of 2000 because that's the ratio I'm in at the moment. Here we are, this is the critical part, the roughing millimeters per revolution. That's the chip load, that's the thickness of the chip, is a 0.2 cut. That's not the depth of cut, but that's the advance of the tool per revolution, that's 8000. Now that's a lot, but you need that to curl the chip and chip break so the machine will run automatically and for the final pass point one that's four thou so hundred meters per minute you'll need to convert this to imperial most of you will be in inches um, okay so that's all set up now if you just post that to the file you can just save it there as a separate uh, little bit of code and later on we can combine them all together. I think this is a good way uh, to do the job, at least if you're a beginner, is to do them as individual little files and test them one at a time. So first of all, produce the facing uh, toolpath and test just that. And then go on to the OD turn. Select your tool number, you're starting on the end, oh, I've got it set up for a different job here. Um, make sure you've got all the correct settings it's all pretty straightforward but you've got to take your time and check it all out and then just run that toolpath and go through I'll, I'll set the camera up over the lathe and and give you a couple of examples to show what I mean about starting really cautiously so you don't ever have any crashes you want to avoid a crash on a lathe with a chuck spinning around and so on so um, produce all these little toolpaths individually here what is there there? About 15 or so. Um, and then we'll combine them at the end of it all. So just going back to the conversational, we've got the facing, the OD turning. Then we've got spot drilling and drilling and uh, threading. So if you're just a beginner, it, it pays to do one to one bit of code at a time. So let's say we're doing the facing uh, cut first. We've produced our bit of code. Um, we've got our uh, slider on the maximum velocity down quite slow and uh, we're going to advance it and have a look at the toolpath on the display and just take it really slowly. And have a look at your DROs and your uh, code and your display. Make sure everything is safe before you start to increase the slider. That looks okay. Now I can speed it up to 100%. So just take it a step at a time, one little bit of uh, conversational code at a time until you've made the complete part, then you can edit them all together with the conversational edit. Hi guys, thanks for watching that part one video. You probably saw me using this Hallmark Lave Tool Setter Electronic. Um, have a look on the Hallmark website if you're interested. There's three different models and price budgets there. Or if you have a look at the uh, video on the Lave Tool Setter F fixed, I outline how you could make your own if you really want to save some dollars. Thanks for watching. Have a look at part two coming up where I go a bit deeper into 
sitting up and running a CNC lathe. Cheers.